Welcome to the West Winds Breviary. We trust these short online services will inspire you and ennoble you, giving you hope and courage as you shadow God in the redemption of the world. Morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for Church Online. We press ever on, leaving our mistakes behind. Exiles coming home. Take this mind that's become its own and soul out for a song. It forgets where it belongs. Take this heart and resuscitate. It's been lifeless far too long. Wounded by its very wrongs Take these lips That have spoken in And infuse them with your song Take it all Take it all Gracious God I give up, I surrender My light flag waves When my hands raise I'm let love The pretender From this shell I sing Forgive, Lord, you raise gracious God. Take these eyes that have cast a glance towards the things that are not mine to wander and incline. Take these When they should err on one side Take it all Take it all Gracious God Shall I sing your praise? There is no grander name. You forgive, Lord, you raise. Gracious God. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Mark chapter 1 and verse 10. Well, pardon me, verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And when Jesus came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. 
Uh, sometimes we lose things in translation, and of course the whole process of Bible translation can be really confusing. For example, the Old Testament was largely written in Hebrew, the New Testament was largely written in Greek, except for the parts of the New Testament that were written in Aramaic, and except for the parts of the Old Testament that were translated first into Greek, before then being interpreted in Aramaic, before then being shared in Greek. So it gets, it gets a little confusing. Consequently, we get to a, a, a piece like this, and there's a word here that's mistranslated. Um, it says that Jesus saw the heavens opening. Well, the actual Greek word there is the word schizo, which means to split apart. It may sound familiar to you because of schizophrenia and all the rest of it. But so the word is schizo, split apart. And the reason schizo is important here is because it's a, a citation, actually, from Exodus. And, and in the Greek translation of the Exodus story, in a book that we call the Septuagint, a very reliable early manuscript, a Greek manuscript of the Old Testament, well, we're told that when the people of God went to walk through the Red Sea, it schizoed, it split apart. And Mark is here drawing a direct parallel between Jesus splitting apart the water at his baptism and Moses splitting apart the water of the Red Sea. Because Mark is signaling to his audi uh, audience that Jesus is offering you and I a new exodus. And whereas the exodus with Moses was a, a physical exodus that came out of exile, they had experienced freedom, but it was temporary because Moses died and everybody else was flawed. Here now in the beloved son of God, a way that God is sacralizing Jesus, God is saying this is this is the king. This is the leader of, of, of everybody, the leader of um, all my purposes and plans. Mark is saying that this new exodus will never end. So, so what does that mean for you and me? That means we're coming out of exile. It means we're not in captivity anymore. Like we're not in captivity to our, our slavery, to our, to our bondage, to our sin. Now, sometimes people don't feel like sin is a bondage at all. But if you've ever been addicted to something, you, you know that that addiction has a hold over you. Like you really need a drink. You don't want a drink. It's 10 in the morning, but you need a drink. You really need to look at porn. Like you don't really need to look at porn, but you feel this deep-seated drive to lock yourself away, to be in the dark, and to look at porn. You really, really need to go out and party and cut loose and have fun with your friends. Why? Because it's got a hold over you. So when you're face down in your own vomit and your heel is broken and you're discouraged and your hair is plastered to your face and you wake up with a headache and you're dehydrated and you don't know where you are and you're sick to your stomach, that that's bonded, that's captivity. And, and it doesn't always feel like that in the highlight, but eventually the, the cascade of sin turns. Eventually it, it twists in our belly and you realize, I, I'm in Egypt, man. I'm a captive and I'm a slave to sin. So Jesus consequently offers you a new exodus, a new way out of that captivity. He offers to take you out of exile and, and bring you home, home to a new family, home to a new people, home to a tribe of God's people, home to a future and home to a hope where you can do what? Where you can begin to live with God, to, to, to reconstitute God's purposes and plans, his identic purposes and plans for the world, where you can pursue God's government, God's creativity, God's peace, where you can fill your mind full of a sanctified imagination, where you can work together with your friends to love and serve others, to, to, to work and cooperate with God and healing the world. That's, that's what God is offering in the new Exodus. That's what Jesus is here to do. And sometimes you and I forget it, man. We, we, we sort of wander around in our lives drifting back towards Egypt, just like we're told in the scripture in the book of Exodus, or in the book of Numbers, pardon me, that the people of God were wandering for so long, they began to complain bitterly against Moses, complaining about their freedom and saying, we had it better off when we were in captivity. Well, yeah, if you've been sober for 10 minutes, you might not like that hangover, but keep at it, champ. Some better is coming, and you guys got to remember that. Got to remember that God made us for freedom. God made us for community. God made us for imagination, creativity, and peace, and we got to get after it.
I want to say thank you to Derek Bycraft today. Uh, Derek, you do a great job of prepping all of the projection that we show to make sure that everything is ready ahead of time and smooth and that you know um, that you have all of your own ducks in a row and it helps a lot with the services and I like that about you very much and I have a Starbucks gift card for you. I want to know if you can return to a place never visited. Flashback with no memories. Be nostalgia with no home. So grace and peace, everybody. Thanks for being with us today for church.